And that's why Charlotte, this year, awful beyond words that I can even come up with. Maybe the worst ever. This, mm -hmm. I, they may be the worst basketball team. It's just an, a, a walking abomination mm -hmm. of basketball in Charlotte right now. The NBA Relocation Committee gets together conceivably to make their recommendation on whether to move the Hornets to the city of New Orleans. The Hornets need to make it past another hurdle next week in New York when the relocation team could give its recommendation on whether or not to move the Hornets to New Orleans. As the nation's first African-American billionaire, the first African-American to own an NBA franchise, and the man generally credited with changing an entire culture, the way I look at it is, had there been no uh, Bobcats, there's somebody willing, and that includes the local city officials, willing to take the chance to bring a team back to Charlotte. It's a build a culture of winning basketball, but understanding that it was going to take time because you didn't have all of the pieces to be a winning team. But I thought what they did was they laid the foundation for the type of people and the type of organization that the Bobcats was going to be. The number two pick belongs to the Charlotte Bobcats. Two years ago, the Charlotte Hornets were in the National Basketball Association. Remember, the Charlotte Hornets were there just two short seasons ago. They leave and go to New Orleans. New expansion team, 30th team in the NBA, the Charlotte Bobcats. With the second pick in the 2004 NBA draft, the NBA's 30th and newest team, the Charlotte Bobcats, select Emeka Okafor from the University of Connecticut. What a great choice. They're going to be dancing with joy in Charlotte. Howard going number one. Orlando, 10 years, man. They're going to regret not taking Mr. Okafor, who is a can't miss in this league for 10 years. You got to play like a winner. Go out there and compete every minute you're on the floor. If you win the fans, win some games, whether it's 19, 20, or 25, we got us an exciting franchise in Charlotte and an exciting Bobcat basketball. With the fifth pick in the 2005 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Bobcats select Raymond Felton from the University of North Carolina. Charlotte Bobcats, a team that has the worst record in the NBA. They are 28 games under 500. In Jones and Wallace, they really start two small forwards. In Felton and Knight, they're starting two point guards. Well, their two guards almost have as many points as the Heat as a team. Shaquille O'Neal tried to dunk with a vengeance, and even that did not work. Well, they're giving the ball back to the Heat because they're saying that it went off a defender's hand. What kind of owner do you think you're going to be? Well, I'm closer to the Mark Cuban type. You know, where I'm passionate, when you see me down on the floor. So I am a hands-on owner, but yet it's, I'm an understanding owner because I, I was down in that same position that a lot of these players are in. With the third pick in the 2006 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Bobcats select Adam Morrison from Gonzaga University. And they picked Morrison because they liked what a lot of you guys on the set are saying. They liked how NBA ready he was. They've got a good young nucleus here. They've got Sean May, Emeka Okafor. They feel that if they bring in a kid who is NBA ready, they can all grow together. And he has done that before against the Bobcats. Gerald Wallace driving. Gerald plus the foul. What a great job by Wallace. And a chance to tie it from the line. If we have a guy that doesn't fit in, he just won't be here. You want to hear your owner say that the premium is going to be on having good guys. We're not going to sacrifice wins. We're going to get wins, but we're going to have good people doing them. With the eighth pick in the 2007 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Bobcats select Brandon Wright from the University of North Carolina. The Charlotte Bobcats trade the draft rights of Brandon Wright at number eight to the Golden State Warriors for the draft rights to Jamario Davidson and the player contract of Jason Richardson. He just throws his body around the court, not only in the games, but in practice as well. And Gerald Wallace, he has the unique distinction of being one of only three players in NBA history to average more than two steals and two block shots for the entire season. Felton, Adam Morrison, Mecca Okafor, Sean May, those guys are all complimentary players. You need a go-to guy to win in this league. Jason Richardson has proven that he can be that in the past. Now it's a risk because Jason Richardson hasn't been able to stay healthy throughout his entire career. They were without Morrison, who are big parts of their future. But when you have a young team, they're all growing together. So they got to figure out who's going to be the leader, who's going to be the go-to guy, who's going to be the guy to take things on their shoulders when things go bad. They have a young coach. Hopefully they can all grow together. 
Larry Brown, his ninth stop at an NBA team, that's being the Bobcats. A lot of work in front of Larry Brown because he's got a collegiate all-star team. They look good from a college standpoint. They're yet to show that they can really develop together. With the ninth pick in the 2008 NBA draft, the Charlotte Bobcats select DJ Augustine from the University of Texas. I want to win so badly. Racing period of trying to see what we need, you know, from a team standpoint, seeing if we can make it better in any way, in any form. Some ways they're going to they're learn. They're going to they're gonna gain it from the coaching staff as well as just from the experience of playing. DL could be a better scorer with the Bobcats. I think that's true. So I think you look at him, he'll probably start at power forward. For the Bobcats there, it's a very nice lineup that they're trying to put together. I'm not going to win many games, but when we're talking fantasy-wise, DL fits in nicely. We'll be play alongside of Emeka Okafor. with the right hand reaching from behind oh boy Sabu Zanaz here from the crowd in Sacramento that was impressive oh my that will uh the NBA 12th pick in the 2009 NBA draft the Charlotte Bobcats select Gerald Henderson from Duke University the Crescent City connection has been sliced apart the Tuesday's trade of Tyson Chandler Chris Paul loses a bit of a security blanket and a big man that he could just throw the ball up to. Now a new chapter begins with a different type of big man. Charlotte no team has had a greater turnover roster wise and that's what Larry Brown does. They've got some pieces in place now. Tyson Chandler if he can stay on the court he will help them immensely. I just don't see enough improvement to be a, a contender. Jackson was traded to the Charlotte Bobcats. The disgruntled Jackson, one of the major links to the team's last playoff run, became disenchanted with the makeup of the team and had been trying to orchestrate a trade since midsummer. Michael Jordan was a high-flying trailblazer in his playing days. The six-time NBA champ is continuing making league history. Jordan's the new majority owner of the Charlotte Bobcats. That's the first time a former NBA player has become a team owner. His nickname is Crash. You know, he's had four concussions. He's had a... Uh, four concussions? Yeah, he's broken all kinds of bones. He's had injury after injury, but here he is. And, uh, and he made the All-Star team. And he made the All-Star team. You're right, playing for the Charlotte Bobcats. Felton against Damari Carroll. Drives, throws it up. It's tipped in. And they score it for Gerald Wallace on a weak side. Tip in. Did release it in time. Yep, no question. Orlando Magic earned their first ever best of seven game series sweep over the Charlotte Bobcats, four games to none, and even without the services offensively of Dwight Howard. For the fans of Charlotte, I would love to have been there. I would love the extended contract in, in that city, but at the same time, I love y'all for everything that y'all did for me, for supporting myself individually and supporting the, the Bobcats. Tyson Chandler is going to find his home in Dallas. Michael Jordan couldn't pull the trigger with the Raptors, and now the 27-year-old Chandler hopes to put injury problems behind him and maybe boost the Mavs with some shot blocking and athleticism in the front court. I think they're one of three teams that'll be fighting for that eighth spot. I think they will hover around. It'll come down to maybe the last two weeks of the season, but I love Larry Brown. I love the guys in Steven Jackson and Gerald Wallace. They're just tough. They will fight, and I think they'll be fighting for that eighth spot at the end of the season. Larry Brown is out as coach of the Charlotte Bobcats. It was a mutual decision that Brown was stepping down as head coach. The Bobcats have been taking their lumps on the court recently, losing three games by 31 or more points in a 10-day stretch. The rationale and what Charlotte is doing, they're, they're making moves to save money. They got rid of Ray Fountain, Tyson Chandler, and now Wallace. Yeah. And they got two number one picks to show for it, and neither of them, I think, can even end up in the top five. It's Wallace with a good look. On fire. Augustine to Jackson to tie the game. Banked it in. Missed it so badly that it banked in. I do want to spin, but I want to move from the eighth spot up to the top three spot. Bobcats owner Michael Jordan two months ago, committing to opening up his wallet to put a better team in the court. Today, a step toward that, bringing in Rich Cho as new general manager. Milwaukee gets off some money getting Sean Livingston, Baino Udrich, Steven Jackson, and they're still in the draft getting Charlotte's 19th pick. And then finally, Charlotte gets the seventh pick, which puts them in control to get the player that they want in the lottery. With the ninth pick in the 2011 NBA draft, the Charlotte Bobcats select Kemba Walker from the University of Connecticut. We will invest. We are, we're, we're putting our money on the line saying that, you know, we want to provide 
championship quality team through the city. Uh, the city's been wanting that. You know, we want it. We feel like we've gotten players and pieces that's going to make a difference for that. Struggle. He's got one point. Oh! DL was completely pointless on the Bobcats, who are in a full-scale rebuild. They simply had no use for a veteran, multi-talented big man with questions about his conditioning and a big-dollar contract. With a loss to the Knicks, the Charlotte Bobcats record fell to seven wins and 59 losses and a winning percentage of .106, the worst in NBA history. And that's why Charlotte, this year, awful beyond words that I can even come up with. Maybe the worst. This, mm -hmm. I, they may be the worst basketball team. It's just an, a, a walking abomination mm -hmm. of basketball in Charlotte right now. I hear what you're saying about Bradley Beal, but Stephen A., I didn't see enough from him. I just didn't see him. The guy I would sit still and take is Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Those players that are young like energy and they like clarity. They want something, targets, in terms of role declaration. How can I best play to my strengths? And I think they're with a good staff and good leadership. With the second pick in the 2012 NBA draft, the Charlotte Bobcats select Michael Kidd Gilchrist of the University of Kentucky. This is the best move Michael Jordan has ever made as a personnel director slash GM slash owner. He took Michael Kidd Gilchrist, who will walk right in there and start changing the culture. Walker works it in on Stan. The jumper for Walker is good with .7 to go and no timeouts remaining to advance the basketball. It does roll up to midcourt. The fact that the, the younger core guys here, to me, are above average competitors. You have your own priorities in terms of judging players. You know, for me, it starts with competitiveness and then skill level. With the fourth pick in the 2013 NBA draft, the Charlotte Bobcats select Cody Zeller from Indiana University. Michael Jordan actually did something right as an NBA executive. Jordan signed free agent big man Al Jefferson, which gives the Charlotte faithful hope. Jefferson is one of the most underrated players in the NBA. We have a few new players, you know, some really great players who can help. I think it's a different culture around here nowadays. Our focus is a whole other level. We're just ready to go. You know, we're ready to play. We're ready to go out and show the world that you know, we've been working hard and that you know, we, we are a good team. Do not foul. Here's Kemba Walker, he got it! Kemba Walker always has a flair for the dramatic. The end of the line for the Charlotte Bobcats. Kemba Walker ends with 29, Eric Spolstra in his sixth year. Trying to take the heat to four consecutive NBA Finals. Nine years ago, Charlotte was awarded another team. They became the Bobcats, leaving the Hornets available once again. Re-enter Charlotte, who tonight announced their plans to reclaim that nickname. With the ninth pick in the 2014 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Noah Vonley from Indiana University. Lance Stevenson was the best signing of the offseason. Not only does Stevenson's defense and playmaking fill two of Charlotte's biggest needs, but Stevenson also came at the bargain basement price of $9 million per year. Hornets point guard Kemba Walker got paid. Walker signed a four-year, $48 million extension with Charlotte Tuesday night, which prevents him from becoming an unrestricted free agent next summer. Kemba Walker, Al Jefferson, Lance Stevenson now in the mix. Are these three players that you feel could be a good core? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we invested in Lance. We're getting a lot of pieces to surround those three players. We feel good about where we are. Hornets guard Kemba Walker's knee injury may be more serious than initially believed. The Hornets point guard will undergo surgery on his left meniscus. The guard has missed three of the Hornets' last five games with ongoing left knee soreness. Walker. Oh, <laughs> and he's got to hit the three on that one. Crossed him up and oh, sit him down. Put him to sleep. 
The Trailblazers and Hornets got together for the deal, which will send forward Nicholas Batum to Charlotte in exchange for forwards Noah Vonleh and Gerald Henderson. The big name in the deal is Batum, a versatile forward who can fill up the stat sheet. With the ninth pick in the 2015 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Frank Kaminsky from the University of Wisconsin. Having conversations with Coach Clifford, he knew my game. He really knew how to use me and was thinking about the best way to uh, give me the best chances to, to succeed. I just want to win. I could care less about making and not making the game. You know, it doesn't matter at this point. You know, I just want to try my best to get my team in the playoffs. Just will to be good. We've been working extremely hard to get back in this playoff race, and now that we're here, you know, we just want to keep on pushing. It was a three-team deal between the Hornets, the Grizzlies, and the Heat. You saw Brian Roberts was there. He's gone now. Courtney Lee, the big piece going to Charlotte. Kemba from half court. Oh, boy! He got it! Whoa! 25 first half points for Kemba Walker. There's the momentum you're talking about, Stephanie Reddy. You know, we had a lot of injuries. You know, we stuck together all year. You know, a lot of people didn't even think we'd be here. So, you know, I'm just really happy, you know, with my team's effort. It was great being around these guys all year. It was a great year. The Charlotte Hornets had a stated focus in free agency, and that was bringing back Nick Batum. They could not re-sign the entire core from a year ago. So watching Jeremy Lin leave for the Nets, Courtney Lee go to the Knicks, and Al Jefferson join the Pacers. They love him at this organization and the fan base here in the Carolinas because he works so hard. He's naturally gifted. During the offseason, he studies film on himself, film on how the opponents are playing him defensively so he can try to exploit those different looks. Everything's here and you no know, to be to be a part of it, you no know, to be center stage. I mean like I I would I would never never think that I would be you know a part of something like this. So man, I mean it was it was really cool, like I said. And a chance to tie with a three or come within one. Walker with a scoop. Oh ice cream time. The speed. I mean Tony Parker just mm, I mean does not want to foul him. Uh, he's not what he used to be. And along the way, his game suffered because his health wasn't as good as it used to be. Remember when he went to the Lakers, had those back injuries and things of that nature. Then he ultimately departed for Houston. The 11th pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Malik Monk from the University of Kentucky. Being the face of the franchise, I mean, you know, have to be a leader, lead by example. Just want to win. That's basically how franchises grow, really. Becoming a consistent playoff team, that's the ultimate goal, to win and, you know, hopefully one day win the championship. They've called around the league, made Kemba Walker uh, available in trade talks. Um, he's their most tradable asset, that he he's the player they have that most teams uh, in the league would covet. The challenge, yeah, whether it's to win a championship, whether it's to go through a rebuild, which I've done both, uh, here it's, it's more, uh, I think we're in a position to actually get into the playoffs. Definitely a very disappointing year. Expected a lot more from us as a team, but you know, this, these are times that you go through and that you learn from and you, you just try and get better. The Charlotte Hornets have fired head coach Steve Clifford. Clifford spent five seasons with the team. He was hired in 2013 when the franchise was known as the Bobcats. He led the team to two playoff appearances, each with a first round defeat. With the 11th pick in the 2018 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Shea Gilgis Alexander from Hamilton, Canada. He did say that his agent told him before he went on stage that he would be going to the Clippers. The Hornets and the Heat are finalizing a deal that is going to send Dwight Howard to the Nets in exchange for Timothy Mozgov and two future second round picks. Tony Parker leaving the Spurs. He is heading to Charlotte. The news broke this afternoon that Parker will sign a two-year, $10 million deal to play for the Hornets. He's going to have a major role with that ball club. He'll play backup to Kimball Walker. Could the Hornets be one of the teams wheeling and dealing? Yeah, could they actually trade star Kimba Walker? The big talk in town isn't who they'll get, but it's who they might lose. Trade Kimba Walker? I'll pass. 
I think if I'm Kimba, I'm looking to go somewhere where I can team up with somebody so I can take the load off. And I love Charlotte, but I think they are making his job so much easier. If money is not the issue and he wants to go somewhere and have a right. chance to win, then I think the, the decision is made. With the 12th pick in the 2019 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select P.J. Washington Jr. from the University of Kentucky. Everything that I heard during the season, they were looking to get Kemba Walker on a discount. Kemba, who's an undersized guard, hasn't been to the playoffs just once in the last four seasons, but you're paying him $221 million. That's a lot for a guy that's really not a number one. Competing at the highest level. We all know Boston is doing that year in, year out. Now, I want to be a part of something really special as far as being able to compete at the highest level and give myself the best opportunity to make you know, a run in the playoffs. When I said I'm not Kimba, I said it for a reason. What he did here was great. It would be unforgettable. I'm not coming out here to try to exactly be him. I'm trying to be myself and, and control what I control and, and win games, man. That's, you know, winning cure everything. Looking for help. Starts with Washington. With the third pick in the 2020 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select LaMelo Ball from Chino Hills, California. Signing all-star wing Gordon Hayward. It's a four-year, $120 million deal. Experienced some severe injuries, and he just turned 30 years old. Not the way Hornets fans thought they would depart with Nick Batum, but he's gone. Michael Jordan's track record in the draft is awful. Michael Jordan is the Michael Jordan of bad owners. He's the greatest athlete in the history of world sports. He's been awful in terms of identifying talent. It's time to announce the Kia NBA Rookie of the Year. Lamella Ball got 84 out of 99 first place votes. Anthony Edwards got the other 15. The Kia NBA Rookie of the Year sits before you there, Lamella Ball. Congratulations, man. With the 11th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select James Booknight from the University of Connecticut. They hope to make a deep run in the playoffs. In fact, Hornets guard Terry Rozier, who signed a four-year, $97 million contract extension, told us today that if this team does not make the playoffs, that he will consider it a failure. Overall season, I think it was smooth until the, until the last game. I'm really not going to count that for real. I feel like as long as we just keep progressing, we'll, we'll be straight. Try to improve on everything for real. You know, if that's just watching film, just working on everything for real. You know what I'm saying? With the 13th pick in the 2022 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets like, select was talking to the Jamie player, Duren can... from the University of Memphis. The Charlotte Hornets are bringing back Steve Clifford as their head coach. That's according to ESPN. Now, Clifford was the head coach in Charlotte from 2013 to 2018, leading them into the playoffs twice. Hornets guard Miles Bridges has been suspended for 30 games by league officials. All this is stemming from his domestic abuse situation. Just so all of this could work. I mean, we all got to step up as a team and individually. Everybody needs to bring what they know they can bring. And I don't really throw too much expectations on. I just take it game by game, you know, go into every game, try to win that one. So pretty much just taking it game by game. LaMelo goes down, fractures his right ankle. He's been dealing with ankle injuries all season long. Now he's out for the season. This is a Charlotte team, of course, the season was already done for. They weren't having any hopes of making it into the playoffs. They're in an awkward spot here because they played so poorly early in the season with the injuries that they were really in sort of prime lottery position. And now they've kind of been rising up and now they might be going back down. They certainly want to make sure LaMelo is here long term. With the second pick in the 2023 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Brandon Miller from the University of Alabama. Hornets locking up LaMelo Ball, five-year extension worth up to $260 million. Hornets selected Ball with a third overall pick in the 20 NBA Draft. The accolades have been piling up. Rookie of the Year, All-Star Game in 22. Michael Jordan is reportedly finalizing a sale of the Charlotte Hornets for about $3 billion. This ends his 13-year run as majority owner. Jordan will keep a minority stake and maintain a presence with the franchise. 
when he did play, were better than the All-Star season. And he looks better now than he did then. So we could see a huge jump here for LaMelo Ball in terms of individual stats and accolades, and more importantly, what it means correspondingly for the team. Boncaro plays basketball like a tight end. Look at LaMelo go at it. And he got landed on by Boncaro. LaMelo still down. Some concern over the Hornets superstar. The fact that you move off of Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, P.J. Washington. Those three guys have been here for a while. They were a part of the play-in team. Had the one year where you finish above 500. But it just transitions into a different era of Hornets basketball. We've been going the right way. You know, we've already been working on everything, on ankle and stuff. So I've been, I've been feeling better. The whole organization as a whole, we're moving in the right way. So they're going to make the right move or whatever. I already feel like we have a great team. I just feel like we need to be avail available to play.